AQA, A-level physics, particles, antiparticles, and photons. So this chunk of the syllabus is what I'm going to be talking about. Um, all of these chunks are not necessarily in a very logical order, I don't think, but we'll plod our way through them. There'll be a bit of repetition. Um, I'll try not to cover stuff without doing the stuff you need to know before. Let's just dive in. We should end up where we need to be. So for every type of particle, there is a corresponding antiparticle. Not for every particle, but for every type of particle, there's a corresponding antiparticle. For example, the electron, there is another type of particle called a positron, which is a positive electron. Uh, the antiparticle has the same mass, but it has opposite charge. So the mass of an electron, 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, is the same as the mass of a positron. Uh, electrons are negative, little e negative. Uh, positrons have plus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So the same mass but opposite charge. They have the same rest energy. Now, very simply, if all of their mass was converted into energy, you can think of mass as actually being very, very, very concentrated energy. It's all of the, the energy bound up holding all these tiny, tiny little bits and pieces together. Okay, it's so um, they have the same rest energy, which is about half a MeV, half a mega electron volt, 0 0.51 MeVs. The biggest difference between them is that the electron is matter and the positron is made of antimatter. Now, what on earth is antimatter? Well, it's weird stuff, okay? We don't see in our everyday lives, we don't really see, we have no knowledge, no concept of this stuff called antimatter for various reasons. The main reason is that tiny, tiny little pieces of antimatter do pop up every now and then, but as soon as they do, they are annihilated. They are wiped out, okay? There may be large bits of antimatter. There may be antimatter galaxies out there, but we haven't discovered them yet. But in our everyday lives, antimatter is not something that we come across. Annihilation. Uh, so when a particle and an antiparticle collide, they wipe each other out, they annihilate each other, and their mass is converted into energy in the form of two gamma photons, which whiz off in opposite directions. Okay, uh, so as I said, antiparticles, for example, positrons don't last very long. If a positron is created, then almost immediately it will be annihilated because it will hit an electron, an orbital electron probably, and they will wipe each other out. And each gamma photon, see there's two gamma photons there, will have at least 0 0.51 mega electron volts of energy. And you should know why from the, the last slide. Now, this is a PET scan, positron emission tomography. Uh, Tomos is the Greek word for slice. And what happens in this imaging procedure, uh, it takes looks at slices of the body. Okay, tomography, tomos. Uh, a bit like a CAT scan is also, that's computerized aided tomography. That's x-rays and slices. But anyway, the patient is injected with glucose, which contains an unstable isotope of oxygen that decays by emitting a positron. Look at this equation, oxygen 15 is decaying to nitrogen 15 and we're getting a positron and we're getting a neutrino. You should know from a previous video why if we're creating a positron, then we need to create this neutrino. Wolfgang Pauli would, would tell you why. Um, now, two gamma photons are created because the positron is almost immediately annihilated. So two gamma photons traveling as opposite directions and this big machine detector on the outside detects them. 
and from the difference it time, in time it takes between the detection, a computer can work out where they were emitted. Now, if you've got something like, let's say, cancer, uh, there's lots and lots of cell division, there's lots of respiration happening there, so there would be lots of this radioactive oxygen-15, uh, and so there'd be lots of positrons being emitted there. And so you can, uh, well, a computer can actually put all these slices together into a 3D image of what's going on inside your body. Positron emission tomography. Now, there's another event that we need to know about, which is the opposite of annihilation, and that's creation. Uh, pair production. Now, what's happening here is that a gamma photon is, it actually interacts with something and it creates uh, a particle and an antiparticle. Okay, it creates a pair of particles. Uh, in this case, an electron and a positron. And this equation, we talked about this equation in another video, and this is about carbon-14, and that's producing a beta minus, an electron, and an antineutrino. That's another example of creation. If you create a particle, you have to create an antiparticle. This gamma photon, well, this gamma photon would need to have at least 1.02 mevs of energy to do this, wouldn't it? Yeah, at least that much energy. You know why, don't you? Okay, this is an interesting photo, and this is perhaps at the end of a particle accelerator, and you can see particles rushing through this liquid gas and creating vapor trails. And notice uh, in there, there are some spirals going in opposite directions. And that's because they, it's all in a magnetic field. Uh, so the, the particles experience forces, but if they're positive or negative, the force is in the opposite direction. So they spin around in opposite directions. What we're actually looking at here is a creation event. Yes, a pair of particles is being created, a positive and a negative pair. Uh, if a particle is created which has no charge, then it doesn't uh, curve at all. Ooh, perhaps there's a bit of pair creation going on there, I think, and they may be heavier particles, whatever. Right, the antiparticles that we need to know. Well, electron and positron, waffled on about them a lot. Uh, now, protons and antiprotons, neutrons and antineutrons. Uh, in a video coming up very soon, we're going to talk about quarks, and protons are made of quarks, and antiprotons and antineutrons are made of antiquarks. Okay, so these are the heavy particles. Uh, neutrinos also have antineutrinos, uh, and they're involved in beta decay, as we've already seen. One last slide, it's we know this anyway, but in terms of particles, light comes in little packets like particles, and we call them photons, uh, and the energy of a photon just depends on its frequency, uh, E equals HF, and there's Max Planck there watching television, uh, and little h is Planck's constant.